that the Lord who is doing this work in us, and He is, it says the work He began in us, He's able to complete in us. He's the potter, we're the clay. We're just lumps of clay. And He's molding and shaping us into what He desires us to be. And you know what He desires us to be? Paul said it in Romans 8. He said, for those whom He foreknew, He predestined to be conformed into the image of His Son, Christ Jesus. He is molding us into the image of Christ Jesus. Don't fight it. Sometimes it doesn't feel pleasant. Wow, he starts molding that clay. But you know what? He's doing the work that you need done in your life. And you know what you do when you uh, take that clay and you mold it and you make it and you get it where you want it? You know what you do next? Fire it up. Put it in the fire. Fire. Put it in the fire. That's, Holy fire. Because that's God's plan. He has a plan and the process is mm. fire. Fire is used to purify gold. Job, in the book of Job, he said, I know that when I have been tried, I shall come forth as fine gold. You know, he went through all this stuff. I don't think that any of us, I know none of us at this table can say we've been tried like Job has. But, he, but Job got to the place where he understood and he said, I know that when I've been tried, I come forth as gold. And you know how you refine gold? Fire. Because when you heat gold up and heat gold up and heat gold up, you know what happens? The impurities float to the surface where they can be scraped off. That's, that's refiner's fire. That's the refining process. So God does that in our life. I can re remember many, many, many years ago. Many, 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 many years ago. <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> Hallelujah. Almost the I'm getting older by the minute, even as we sit here. But it was like, you know, I had, I had, I had, I pray that I still have, I have even more, a desire to be what God wants me to be. And nobody, I mean, people may look at me and judge me. They do. But you know what? Nobody will judge me or, or, or examine me as harshly as I do. I know what impurities exist in my life. So I'd see things, and I'd say, oh, Lord, help me, Lord. Help me take this out of my life. And the next thing I know, it's getting worse. That's right. Because he's putting fire into me, and that thing was rising to the surface where he could remove it. God is good, I'm telling you what. He knows what he's doing. The Greek word katharsos, which is used for being purified in Matthew 5, 8, we get the English word cathartic, which is a purgative used to clean out the body. The purpose of this study is that the word is a cathartic that God will use to cleanse our hearts, to purge our hearts of the things that don't belong there. Unite my heart to fear thy name. That's what it says in the Psalms. Because, you know, we, we let our heart get divided when we start treasuring things that are not mm -hmm. God. You know, it, this may rub you the wrong way, but all means all. Yes. To love the Lord with all your heart means there's no room for anything else. else. That's the deal. You know the story of Elijah on Mount Carmel? If you don't, you can go to First. Kings chapter 18 because the people of God had become so impure so rife with, with sin and disobedience and rebellion to God that Elijah would come into the land he'd been out for three and a half years where God withheld the rain right and when he came back he would say I alone am left he didn't see anybody else around living the, living the word now God told him 7,000 have I kept who have not bowed their knee to Baal he, but that 7,000 is not a lot in Israel at the time okay so God calls Elijah the prophet to come back and use him to deal with this situation. He calls together the people. And now remember, the, the king and queen of Israel at this time, Ahab and Jezebel, Jezebel. They're, they're actually they were evil. Mm -hmm. And they're taking care of the false prophets. They're, they're the bad guys. So Elijah calls for the people of God to come up to Mount Carmel and the false prophets. And in the boldness of the Lord, he says to the false prophets, the prophets of Baal, he says, call upon your God, build an altar, and call upon your God to, to burn, to take that offering. And I'll do the same thing. And whoever is God answers, he's God. So the prophets of Baal, they dance around, they cut themselves, they do all the pagan stuff, nothing's happening. So Elijah, in his godly fashion, says, what's the matter, your God asleep? Your God on vacation? And after they give up, he tells the people, now remember, there's been a drought in the land for three and a half years. One of the most precious things in the land is water. 
he takes an offering, and he has him rebuild an ancient altar and put an offering on the altar. And then he says, now go get water and pour water on the offering. Now he's going to call God to burn this. Normally, if you're going to burn something, you don't want to wet it down first. Right? Let's make this a real challenge for God. So they build this altar, they rebuild the altar, they put the offering on it, and Elijah calls on God to send the holy fire. And God sends the fire. And in 1 Kings 18.38, it says this, Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed that burnt offering, and the wood, and the stones, and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. Our God is a consuming fire. It all went. A consuming obsession. Your relationship with God should fill your life, fill your heart, fill your mouth. It should be an obsession in your life. 